<laughs> All right. All right, y'all. It seems that I have surely lost my mind, but let's do it anyways. Authentic on air with Bruce Alexander. I am your host, Coach Bruce Alexander, and I do not know what I think I'm doing today. Um, I am going to attempt to teach on a whiteboard something that I've never taught before on a podcast live recording. I I think I just like punishment. Um, so lately, I've been learning this method. This method of solving problems. I'm a life coach, so solving problems is what I do. I'm naturally pretty good at it. But there is so much more to the world out there. There's so many different techniques. There's so many different styles of doing everything that I'm always trying to grow, always trying to get better. And when I learned this technique of problem solving, I saw its immediate value and wanted to share it with the followers that I have who have been ride or die with me all 10 of you who continue to come back over and over again. And I wanted to share this with you. Um, This is definitely going to be a better video experience uh, because I am going to be drawing stuff out. But if you are listening, I'm going to try to make it sound just as good and you will still be able to get a lot of value of it. But um, bear with me. Um, I asked the question, who do I think I am? And I'm Coach Bruce and this is my show. So this is a massively valuable framework that I think can help anybody solve really any problem. And I've paid thousands of dollars to get the process and to get trained on it. So stick with me and it will be valuable for you as well. So in solving this problem, the, the first thing you have to do when solving any problem is what? You have to define the problem. And in my example, the problem is I have no control what happens in my life. I'm an ADHD parent and I just don't, I don't control what happens to me. So the first thing you're going to define is where are you now or where do you want to be? Um, So right now, our problem is problem over here. That's our problem. That's our first step. And then we are going to define our possibility. So our possibility is, and this is just an example. This, once again, is applicable to many, many different things. But our problem is ADHD controls my life. That's a big problem. What's the possibility there? Because the the opposite of our problem is our possibility. Our possibility. Our possibility. So our possibility is that you control your life. You control your life. And you design it for you to thrive and have massive fulfillment. So you control. your life. So those are our problem and possibility. It's important. It's starting out super simple. The reason why this goes from simple to more and more complex is for you to be able to take the information that's being delivered to you and have a container to be able to hold it. Um, The way that my, my mentor put this is that if he were to have me over for dinner and he were to give me spaghetti, um, if he just brought it and threw it on the table, sure, I could eat the spaghetti, yes. But wouldn't it be much better if he provided a container, like a bowl or a Tupperware, for me to have as a vehicle for that inf- that information or the spaghetti that he was giving me? So I'm going to be creating a container, going slowly, allowing you to be able to process the information I'm giving you, and it will not feel overwhelming as we go through this process. So 
The problem is ADHD controls my life. Possibility, you control your life and you have designed it to thrive and have massive fulfillment. So we're going to call our problem either our, that's either going to be our peak A. So that's our peak A or our pit. So our problem is going to be either this first peak or it's going to be the place where everything's bad and sad. And we call that the pit. And our possibility is going to be over here. That is peak B. Peak B is our is our possibility. And you see that there is a big size difference. I would much rather be this guy over here standing on top of this peak. Look how it looks like he's going to the bathroom. I'll have to get better at that. I would much rather have climbed this peak on top of that one than to be this guy back here, still my tiny little peak, not doing the things that I know I could do with my life. So, and in between there is our pit. And we're going to talk about the pit a little bit more in a second. So we've got our we've got our PK and our peak B. That is our problem and our possibility. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dig a little deeper into our problem. We're going to detail four ways that the problem is a problem. Once again, my example is you're an ADHD parent who doesn't feel in control of their life. Your problem can be whatever your problem is that you want to solve, but you're going to go about it by defining your problem and your possibility, then you're going to go deeper into your problem. So for me, the first thing is you have no standard that you hold yourself to. No standard. You're just out there wheeling and dealing willy-nilly, and there's nothing that guides you. So that's problem one. Two, you have no guiding code. No code that you live by that helps you to stop running from emotional lows and running to emotional highs. So you need, you have no code. Secondly, your decision structure is trash. How do you spell decision? I know, D-E-C-I-S-O-N. Structure is trash. That is the third thing, meaning that you make all your decisions based on what? You have no fucking clue. You just, however you feel in the moment is how you make your decisions. And that generally does not leave you in places where you want to find yourself. And then finally, the only thing that you consistently provide your kids is guilt shame and emotional roller coasters. Roller coasters. So our problem is you have no standard, you have no code you live by, your decision structure is trash, and the only thing that you're consistently providing your kids is guilt, shame, and emotional roller coasters. So that is, once again, that's, that is our peak A. That is where we're at right now. And our possibility is peak B. So what what is our possibility? if our if our problem is you have no standard, you live by no code, your decision structure is trash, and you, the only thing you consistently provide your children is guilt, shame, and emotional roller coasters, our possibility is not that, it's something much better, right? So oh, actually, we're not going to go there yet. 
We're not going to go to the possibility yet. First, we're going to talk about this here pit. So our pit is the place right here. This is our pit. That our pit is the place where we're going to have to get through to get to our new possibility, our new peak. And it is full of sharp spikes that are going to make it very uncomfortable to get to the next level, right? And in your pit, you are going to find all the problems that are being cascaded from the fact that you don't have a standard, you don't live by a code, your decision structure is trash, and your guilt, shame, emotional roller coasters being your only consistent thing you provide to your kids. So <clears throat> let's talk about our pit. Once again, whatever your pit is for your problem, it's important that you get into these things and you define them and you have to understand what the struggle is. So here in our pit, we're going to come down here. We're going to try that again. We're going to get better with this thing. Come down here. Boop. All right. So our pit is number one. And we're going to, we're going to define our pit in our balance, which is our relationships with our, our family, our wife, spouse, whatever, and our children, our being, um, our relationship with God, higher power, the universe, whatever it is you believe in, um, me, it's God, our body, our fitness, how we take care of ourselves, how we eat, and finally, business. If you don't own your own business, that's totally fine. It's how you make money. It's whether you go to work or you are an entrepreneur or whatever. Business is how you make money on a day-to-day -day basis. So, and we're going to cascade, our pit is going to cascade our problems all the way across that. So right now, your pit is all of your interactions are screaming fits because you are so overwhelmed that you have no bandwidth to actually have conversations. We're going to... From overwhelm. And there's also going to be some, some ADHD process in there, maybe some autistic meltdown. It's going to be very hard to deal with parenting whenever you have no bandwidth. Two, our second problem is you go to church and you believe in God, but you do not know him. You cannot feel God moving in your life. You don't feel like you have a connection that is truly genuine with God. So you believe but cannot feel, at least consistently, you cannot feel God consistently. I don't know. So I am drawing all this out. If you're listening, that's why there's more space than usual. So you believe, but cannot feel God consistently. Our third, a little third section of the pit is that you eat like shit. And you have no drive to be any kind of fit anymore because you just can't even. You can't even. Just, you can't even. I've been there. I was not even been that long ago. Being physically fit totally fell off the radar for me. And I'm just now getting back into it because I see how it is affecting the rest of my life. And it's important for me to try to have it all. But. Right now, you just can't even, you have no drive to try to be fit anymore because you were just, you have no bandwidth. Once again, bandwidth is going to be a common place of discussion here. Finally, in your business, you have no passion. Whatever it is, you don't want to fucking do it anymore. And you don't know why you keep showing up to work. I mean, you know, you want to keep eating, but that's the only reason why you keep going. No passion. Why do I go? So that is what your pit is right now. What the? You are a bracket. You are a bracket. 
Okay, so that's your print. That's your pit. You have screaming fits from overwhelm. You believe but cannot feel God consistently. You just can't even with your fitness. And you have no passion and are asking yourself, why do I go to work? And it's to make money. We get that. We understand. But if you're asking yourself that consistently, it's because you need a plan. You need to figure some stuff out. So it's really important that whatever the problem is you're trying to solve, whatever it is, you are willing to get into this pit. If you are not willing to get into this pit, you will not be able to solve this problem. This pain is important part of being able to get from here at A. If we're here, we're going to take a little travel down into this pit. And whenever we are, whenever we've got our next couple parts set up, we're going to be able to use the momentum and the pain that we find down in the pit to launch us into. Uh, into the lift to get to our next peak, right? But if you don't have your pain and your pit nailed down, you will not be able to achieve that. So now we have so far we've defined the problem, um, which once again, for my example, you are a parent who lets ADHD control your life. We've defined the possibility that you control your life and you design it for you to thrive and have massive fulfillment. And uh, we've gone deeper into defining the problem. You have no standard that you hold yourself to. You have no guiding code. You live by running from emo emotional lows and to emotional highs. And that's how your just garbage decision strip decision making skills are done. And finally, the only thing you're consistently providing your kids is guilt, shame, and emotional roller coasters. We've gone even deeper into the pit and we've gotten really deep into that. So now we are going to get into the better part of this. We're going to talk about our possibility. So our possibility is going to be over here. Possibility. And our possibility is just as important, if not more so, than our pit. Because once you understand how shitty the situation you are in is, then you need a, oh, you need a, I totally just blanked on the word. You need a compelling future. You need a compelling future to drive you forward to make this massive transition. If you want to com complete this transformation, you, this future needs to pull you forward. It needs to be something that compels you. If you are not compelled then you're not sold on this process. You are not going to continue on with it. As soon as it gets hard, you're going to fucking quit. And I don't want that from you. So I strongly encourage you to do the steps properly. Get into the pain pit. Whatever the problem is, really dig deep. And then do everything you can to then paint this possibility to be something that is fantastic for you. So for my ADHD parent, here is what we're going to say is our, our possibility is you have an identified set of core values and beliefs. Core values and beliefs defined. Also, I'm sorry, it's those core values and beliefs are defined. And not only that, but you've made them your own and they resonate with you deeply throughout all your, through your balance, your body, your being and your business. This is not just something that hits on one level. It really resonates throughout your entire life and feels natural for you to live aligned with. It's not something that you have forced yourself to try to be someone you're not. Also, you have a code that drives you to do your best every day. You live by a code that is extremely important because right now what do you live by what is your everyday mantra let me know put it in the comments if you got one i'd love to hear it um and that code allows you to not accept the lies that you've told yourself in the past and allows you to settle for just being bleh with your life. Good is not great, and your family deserves great. So you, thirdly, 
you make decisions from a position of power. Powerful decision making. Powerful, dis um, powerful decision making, and finally, you. Sorry, let, let's just go back on the powerful decision making. You are making this de decision from a position of power and confidence, guiding your family towards a unified vision. So let's let's add that unified vision part too, because that sounds pretty good. Unified vision. Everybody's on board. Everybody's on the bus and they love where they're going. I think that would be pretty fantastic for any family. And finally, you are a consistent source of love and stability for all of your family. They look at you and they're like, that's love right there. There's no doubt in their mind what they're going to get from you. And does that mean it has to look the same for everybody? No, it does not. That's what I. That's why I am a coach for ADHD parents because I am an ADHD parent, and I know that there is no one goal that's going to look the same for me. It's going to look the same for you. It's going to look the same for our friends. It's going to look the same for anybody else we know in our ADHD community. Because what matters to me will not be the same as what matters to somebody else. But love and stability should be something that you can provide to your family. Stability. That means they can expect something that is similar all the time. And that love should be something that you are able to provide no matter what is going on if you have your shit together. <clears throat> and I'm encouraging you to get your shit together. That's why you're watching this video, right? That's why you are trying to learn how to solve your problems. And if you are trying to solve the ADHD problem of it controlling your life, I'm giving you the exact steps. Just follow along and do what you're told. Coach Bruce will help you out as much as he can. So let's throw a box around that possibility. Boop. Love it. Don't love that it kind of shaded the color a little bit. Okay, so, so far, let's just go back a little bit. We've defined our problem. ADHD controls my life. Once again, pretend like, let's, let's do it this way. If this is your problem. I'm just going to I'm going to say it generically so you don't think that this can only be for my ADHD situation. Problem. Whatever your problem is, define it. Possibility. Whatever your problem is, define it. Then you've got your peak A. You're going to define that. That is your current problem as it is. It's the facts about that problem. Then you're going to go even deeper and you're going to describe how that problem is affecting you in your life all across the core four of body being balanced and business. This is once again, I'm trying not to be specific as to the ADHD parents. Then you are going to define the possibility. You're going to lay out what it could look like if you were to get all this shit together and you were to be able to have a vision you were moving towards. And once again, it is extremely important that you define your pit and then also extremely important that you really specifically define this possibility very thoroughly because whatever problem you're, you're solving, all humans, but I believe especially neurodivergent ones, need a compelling future to commit to that long-term transformation. It really needs to move us. It really needs to speak to our souls. So what now? We've defined all this stuff. Now would be a good time to take a little breath roll your shoulders out a little bit because now the actual work starts um right now it has just been a lot of um taking account of what's already going on we've just been looking around and seeing what do we already have what do we want to go and now we're going to start doing the work to get from pk here to up here at our much higher vantage point that looks much better so how are we going to do that? So if the pit is these really mean spikes here that we don't like, 
Oh yeah, that means that if we don't like those spikes, then what we're going to define here is our principles. Principle one, two, three, four. Our four principles are gonna be the things, our pillars that support the path that allows us to go over, well, not fully over because we do, we are still gonna to need to get in that pit. We're gonna to need to get in that pit to capitalize from the pain there. So let's make, let's, let's take our path back a little bit. It's more like this. Oops. I'm making all kinds of mess because I accidentally turned it to eraser, but these are our principles. One, two, three, four. And so we're going to ride the drift down from our PK into the pit. We're going to get all that pain on us and we're going to use it to lift us to peak B. But we're not going to stay there because we are provided with the stability from our principles. And then we will define a path which will actually carry us there. So our principles, those are these here. Those are going to be over here. Boop. Oh, that's terrible. Nope, they're not going to be there. I'm new to this, guys. Give me a break. This whiteboard teaching is... It's not, it's not for the faint of heart. All right. It's going to be there. That's where our principles are going to be. So those principles that are going to support our path, there's going to be four of those as well. What these principles are, they are the mindset that you are going to have to be able to, uh, to adopt to be, to be the person who is able to solve this problem. So, Albert Einstein says something to the effect that the person who created this problem does not have the capacity to solve it. In order to solve the problem that you've created, your capacity will have to grow, meaning that you will have to you will have to drastically change who you are. You will have to be willing be willing to do the work or ask for help. So, in this situation up here to get from this person to this person, you could take somebody like me. Boop. A little belly there and a cape. Because I'm like a superhero of problem solving. Boop. Uh, that's me like getting ready to fly. It looks terrible. So. So I'm a superhero of problem solving, so I can come in and I can look at your problem, use my x-ray vision, boop, look at your problem there, look at your possibility, boop, and I can tell you what the quickest way to solve this problem is. Or you can do the work. I'm okay with you wanting to do the work. I actually, I, I give all the credit to people who want to do the work. That's how I was. I really wanted to do the work on this situation, but I realized that Learning how to solve these kinds of problems, the kind of problems I was in with my business was too big for me. So I got help and I learned how to do this process. And now I can solve lots of problems for lots of people. So sometimes it is not how, it's who. It's asking the question of who's going to be able to help me with this thing. So it might be somebody like me. It might be you. But either way, it's not going to be you as you are now. You are going to have to change some stuff. You are going to have to change your mentality and how you look at things. And this is, let me take this over here. This is a really interesting thing I, I learned. If you're at point A, A over here, boop. But you want to get to point C. Yeah. C. There is very likely a wall between point A and point C. You have to change your mentality to point B to even be able to see how to get to point C, 
right now, point A to point, nope, I cannot see it. It is blocked from me. There is a wall between point A and point C, but the mentality, the switch in mentality is point B, being able to get to that switch in mentality in which you accept these new principles that is going to allow you to be able to then see how to get to point C. This is also, I've been talking about this a lot lately. It's taking that first step. It is taking that uh, that bold leap of faith that says, I will figure out the rest later. That is often what allows you to get from point B to point C. It may not get you to point D, which is where you really want to get, but it'll get you much further down the road and you will be able to see what your next steps are. But like right now, even at point B, I can still only see just a piece of point D. So you have to really just accept that you're getting to point B. Once you get there, then, oh, now I can see my steps to point C. Oh, now I can see my steps to point D. But if you try to get to point D from point A, it is impossible. The person you are at point A cannot even fathom what point D looks like. And that is that is not because there's something wrong with you. That is just how the human brain looks. You are a result of your history and your experiences. And if you've never seen anything like point D, you can't fathom how you could possibly get there. So, yeah. So first, let's let's lay down those principles. I'm going to erase all of that crap. So... The person you are at point A cannot see how to get to point C or point D. So focus on these principles first. So if you are an ADHD parent who does not have control of their life, they, well, they, they feel like they don't have control, this is going to be what you are going to do. <clears throat> you are going to adopt these mindsets. To be in control in control you must take control meaning what meaning that if you never take the wheel of the car then you are not going to drive it where you want to you have to decide that this is your life and you are going to design it for you. If you don't make that decision, it's not going to fucking happen for you. You have to make a decision to make a change and start acting towards that change. <laughs> so our second point, but let's, let's not do, let's do point or two numbers on this one. So point one, to be in control, you must take control. Point two, is if you were driving without a destination, you are just wasting gas. I hope that makes sense to you, but just driving around as a senior citizen would say all willy nilly with no direction is just going to leave you with an empty tank and no ability to get to where you actually want to go until what are you going to have to do when you have an empty tank? You have to ask for some help. You have to tell somebody, Hey, I've got an empty tank. I need somebody to help me get to where I want to go. And that's okay. It's okay to ask for help. A lot of us think that it is weak um, I have realized that it is the best thing I've ever done was to ask somebody who knew how to get out of the problem I was in to help me get out of it. It seemed like a weak move, but now I am, I feel better about my life than I have in a very long time. Maybe ever, possibly ever. Is everything perfect? No, I'm fucking broke. I'm not making the money I need to make yet. I'm overweight, but I understand the situation I'm in and I'm able to accept the facts and make a plan for the future in a real and honest way. And that feels really good. Like, I really like being able to deal with the facts now instead of just uh, living on a lie. It's not fun. It is not fun. So our third principle is everything 
you believe. about success it, oh no it oh no I keep hitting erase instead of not erase success is a lie and I don't need to explain this to you, but I will. Um, it's a lie because you are a neurodivergent. Everything that we were taught about success was for neurotypicals. They can all do it the same way. The cookie cutter standard works for them. Their brains are like, uh, are just photocopy blueprints of each other. Each and every one of our neurodivergent brains looks different than the next. So there is no cookie cutter standard for us. You have to redefine what success means. So everything that you know about what it means to be successful is not correct. You have to remake your brain and redefine success. If you want to find success that is meaningful and long lasting is not going to burn you the fuck out and make you overwhelmed. Redefine that shit. Finally, our fourth principle is that just because you can't meet their standard their standard does not meet, mean you cannot meet a standard And what this means is that you have to hold yourself accountable. You cannot just keep saying, well, you know, I'm ADHD. I can't do that. Sure, there's lots of stuff that you may not be able to do to the degree a neurotypical can, but you can do anything. You are not, you are not laid up in the hospital with no ability to think or move. You are able to do anything that you desire if you are willing to work hard enough and stay focused long enough. You can do it. I promise you, you can. I am not any less ADHD than anybody else, but I have learned to focus my ass off on the right things and work hard so I can get better and grow to the things that are important to me. Like, I want to be an amazing fucking life coach. I want to change lives forever and have people think that I was the facilitator of the greatest change that I've, they've ever been through. And in order to do that, I have to keep growing. I got to keep getting better too. So I'm committed to doing that. It's not just going to happen on its own. All right. So from here, we have defined our problem, our possibility, our PK, our peak B, our pit, our, um, and our principles. So these are all the things you have to have. You have to have your problem, your possibility, your, uh, go in depth on your problem, go even deeper in your pit, then you are going to describe a possibility that is compelling for whatever your problem is. Then you are going to define your principles that are going to be the, the mindset that you have to adopt in order to be able to take the path, which gets us to the peak. So now we are to our path. We are ready to define this path. Boop. I'm drawing inside our path and making it look really dumb. But that's our path there. And so our path is going to be just getting full. Path is going to go whoop. I really just like saying whoop. So our path is over here. What is our path? Our path is the series of actions we need to take to actually get this shit going. So in my example of ADHD parents who are struggling to feel in control of their life, what do you need to do to start to take control of that shit? For one, you've adopted the mindset and you've got the principles in your head that to be in control, you must take control. Driving without a destination, you are just wasting gas. 
everything that you believe about success is a lie. You got to redefine your success. And then you can't meet or just because you can't meet their standard doesn't mean that you shouldn't meet a standard. Now that you've got all that, now your path is going to be your defined steps. And that's what keeps us from either. Sorry, I'm going to go back to the pit real quick. If we don't have a path, we're going to go into this pit. Bloop. And we're either going to stay here in the pit. Bleh, or we're going to circle back, recycle, and start back where we were at the beginning. We're going to tell ourselves a bunch of lies and we're going to say, well, next time I, and you know, if things were different, I would. And um, whatever excuses, like I'm just not capable to, and we're going to get back to the pit that we start to the peak that we started at. And we're going to say, that's good. It's good enough. And good enough is great. And it's not, is it? I mean, it's not for me. I want great. I want great getting greater. So that is going to be the path that is going to keep me from falling and staying in the pit or falling back to the beginning of the cycle. We don't want to come this far just to go back to the beginning. So this is going to be four more things that we are going to accomplish. One, that are going to start our lift up to the peak. So for my ADHD parents, one, do a life inventory. This shit sucks. It should be painful. It should not feel good. That's how you know you're telling the truth. It should be brutal. It should be brutally honest. You should lay everything out on the table. If you are working as a couple, fantastic. But you're going to hurt each other's feelings because you're going to tell some, some real shit. You should get everything out there. The more real you get with this, the more of a massive and transformational uh, movement you're going to be able to have here. So do a life inventory. Two, I'm going to try to wrap this up fairly quickly so I can get to keep this under an hour. But two, so one, you're doing the life inventory. And that is also going to be talking about what is working, what is not. And it's basically naming, defining, and writing down your pit. That's why it sucks so much. As ADHD people, we can talk all fucking day. But when you want to make us write stuff down so we can actually see it on paper, actually hold it in our hands, or look at it on a computer and actually check stuff off as we talk about it. It's not fun, but it's important. So next you're going to define your core values and beliefs. To define core values and beliefs. I mean, this one's pretty obvious, right? But all of this, every part of this process, you should be being honest. If, you were, if you're lying to yourself while you're doing this and you're wasting your fucking time. But if you have been somewhat honest so far, here you need to get really, really real. You need to be brutally honest about what naturally aligns with you at your core. As you're defining your core values and beliefs, you need to be so honest about what you really care about and what is actually going to compel you moving forward? Because if you lie about it, you're going to be right back in the situation that you started at living a life that is not designed for you. Be honest, take accountability and design the fucking life you want. All right. Sorry. Um, it's all about what resonates with you at your core. Three, define a destination. Destination. What is your vision? What is your vision across the core for? What is your vision for your family? What is your vision for your uh, your being? Sorry, what is your vision for your balance, your, your relationship with your family, with your spouse? What is your vision for your relationship with God? What does it look like? What is your vision for your business? What is your vision for your body? You need to have an area that you want to go to in all of these. And as the more specific, the better, but I understand that it will be very difficult to be extremely specific through all of this if you are as ADHD as I am, but you need to define something. Even if it's like, I want to be fitter in that my stomach is smaller and my muscles are larger. That is pretty about as specific. Like, I don't have a specific weight. I don't care about a specific weight, but I know that I want to be able to bend over and tie my shoes without being out of fucking breath. And that means that I need to have a smaller stomach and it's okay to have bigger muscles because I like them and so does my wife. 
So that's it can, it's okay to be that generic, but it is something that is going to drive you. It's going to compel you and have you moving forward. So that is define a destination. And the fourth piece of the path is you're going to compare this to what you have known. I'm going to erase that because that this all runs together. So compare to what you have known and destroy. Fucking destroy everything that has been keeping you a slave to this life that is not designed for you. Destroy that. Destroy those beliefs. Destroy those habits. Destroy those values. If it doesn't actually line up with what you want for yourself, then fuck it. It doesn't matter. This life is for you. I don't care what anybody else has been telling you. Your parents, your if your spouse is keeping you in a box that you want to be kept in, I'm sorry. Fuck them too. You deserve to live a life that has you on fire with passion and purpose and doing something that is keeping you a slave to a system that you do not believe in is, is not going to allow, it's not going to allow you that period. So you have to destroy all that shit. You have to let it go, burn it down and recommit to something that actually matters. That's the difference though. You have to commit, you have to commit to something. You cannot just burn it all down and have no standard because then you will be left floating in the abyss and you'll be even fucking unhappier than when you were a slave to the system. You have to commit to something. You have to have a standard that is keeping you on track to a goal. The whole purpose of being in this life is expansion, is growth. If you are doing none of that, you are going to be extremely fucking unhappy and you're going to be broke because you have probably lost your job because you're not, you've burned down what you do know and you're not committed to anything new. Sorry, I got a little excited there. So, and I know this all might seem super specific, like it only works for ADHD parents, but it does not. As I've said, I went back through every, like each one of these pieces can be put together for whatever problem you have to solve. This is like the path is going to lift you up to the peak. We are here now. We're at the peak. So going to a new page <laughs> at the peak, there's going to be a door. You're going to be at that door. And now that you're on fire with passion and purpose, you're going to be ready to kick that motherfucker down. But in order to get through that door, there are going to need to be four more keys. One, oops. One, two, three, four. So you have one door and you will have four keys. And those four keys are going to be for you to define. I hate to tell you, I cannot give you every single answer for every single problem. These are going to be pretty unique to you and your situation. If you are struggling with a problem that I've been going through today, the, the example I've given of the ADHD parent who is struggling to feel in control of their life, the ADHD parent who's now ready to kick the fucking door down and take control of their life back, then you need to set up a consultation with me and I will give you those keys free of obligation, no charge, you owe me nothing. I just want to see people who are willing to do the work and ready to commit to that level of, well, to ready to commit to a new lifestyle. And I will tell you exactly what to do next. I will tell you what needs to happen for you to unlock the door and kick that fucker down and start living a life of just incredible possibility. But in order to even reach the one door and to uncover the four keys, you have to first uncover the path, which means that you have to first accept the principles, make those your mindset, and to get to the principles, to really unlock those for whatever your problem is, you have to get in your pit and get familiar with your pain. You have to know what the problem you're dealing with is. You have to do all these steps in order for the one door to appear. You cannot get to the one door without going through the process. This process will work for you. It will solve any problem. I really do believe that. But you have to be honest and you have to be committed to doing it all. 
You have to be committed. You cannot just do this half-assed. If you do it half-assed, you will, you will get to the one door and you won't be able to unlock it or you won't even be able to find it. You might get to a peak and you will find yourself lost. You will find yourself lost and without footing and you will slide back down to maybe to your previous peak, maybe just to the pit. Either way, you have to commit to seeing it all the way through and doing whatever it takes for as long as it takes to finish this out, to change your life forever. I really, really, really help or hope, I really, really, really hope that this insanely different episode has been of use to somebody today. I really do. Um, if you are interested, if you are an ADHD parent and this sounds like a process that you are just totally willing to take on, but you are not ready to do it by yourself. That's why I'm here. That's what I do. I help the people who are committed to making the change, but don't, they don't have the confidence to do it themselves. That's okay. It is okay to ask for help because that is exactly who I'm here to help. I want to help you. I love helping people create this transformation in themselves, and I'm excited to do it. I would love to work with you. So jump in the uh, jump in the description, hit the link for a consultation, and we will set something up. Um, that is it for this episode today. This has been not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Once again, um, this is the process. It is a formula that is. It's as simple as you as it can be, but it can be as complicated as you make it. It is not easy, but it is simple. It will be hard. It will not. It will be emotionally wretching. You will have a lot of pain, um, but that's okay. What I learned is that pain is power. If you let it be, you have to take that pain and you have to fucking own it, and you have to turn it into jet fuel. For, to launch you to your dreams. But you need to know where your dreams are. You need to know the destination. You have to do some work. You can't you cannot just keep running from emotional lows and running to emotional highs or else you will never find true fulfillment, purpose or I'm not going to say joy. Yes, joy. I'll say joy. I'm not going to say happiness, but joy. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much if you have hung out and listened to this whole thing. It's been wild. I don't know if I'll do another one like it ever again, but I had a lot more fun than I expected. Be yourself and love yourself, and I will talk to you all next week.